ahead. We're going to get started. Praise the Lord, everybody. God bless you. Welcome. Welcome, Facebook. Welcome, Zoom. God bless everybody. We're so happy you're here. Amen. What did we just say? That it's been a long day? A long day. <laughs> what did you do today? <laughs> wow. What didn't we do? Oh, I homeschooled mm -hmm. and you worked mm -hmm. from home. Do you do anything else? And then we had a, two baptisms today. Praise God. We had two baptisms today. Yes. Amen. Amen. So Hallelujah. Excited. Yes. We are so excited. Right before we came. Mm -hmm. So that was awesome. Mm -hmm. So it's We're sister, pumped up. Yep. <laughs> sister Jenny Betancourt's husband and her and their daughter. No. Yes. Yes. Jenny Betancourt. And um, okay. yeah, his name is Wade. Mm -hmm. And uh, super excited. God moved. Um, it oh, was it, it was in our backyard. Uh, I, I'm telling you, you know, uh, the presence of God was there. Amen. Yeah. The presence of God powerful. was there. Huh? It was powerful. Oh my gosh. You know, uh, I can't wait until we get back in so mm -hmm. we can do baptisms here. Uh, my wife and I were speaking in tongues. I mean, uh, we were said, singing. Oh, yeah. Awesome. It, so it was awesome, folks. God he, is moving. He's moving. Yeah. He has not gone to sleep. No. He has not forsaken his people, even though it feels like we Stop. are separated, but I'm telling you, there is a new day coming yes. and the church of Jesus Christ is going to prevail. Amen. Remember what Jesus said. He said, uh, he, he said that I will establish my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Amen. So, you know, and you are the church. Yes. You are the church. Amen. So no matter what is getting thrown at you, right? fear not. Amen. That's on the move. Have hope. Yeah, yes. he is. He's on the hope. I mean, he's on the move. Yeah. And so anyway, I'm super excited. We have, we've had oh, a great day. Powerful. God is moving. Amen. Amen. And if you're out there listening and uh, you have not been baptized in Jesus name, amen. You need to stick with it. You need yes. to get baptized yes. and God amen. will, he will be with you. Hallelujah. Amen. So yes. do not be afraid. So anyway, that was our day. Yeah, that was a big day, but. Yeah, God so we're excited. excited. Yes. Amen. Shall we pray? Amen. All right, let's go ahead and pray in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank bless you, Jesus. We thank you, God. We, Lord, we're excited. We had the day that we had, and we ask you, Lord, that you will bless the day that everybody who watches had today. And Lord, if it was a little bit of a downturn, we ask you, God, that this Bible study would give them hope. And Lord, they would end this day on a wonderful note. Hallelujah. And we ask you, God, right now in Jesus' name, open our hearts, open our minds. Lord, let us see your heart in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So, amen. Uh, don't forget, if you go to... Um, if you go to truevineapostolic.org, you can get a copy of, uh, you can either print off or you can have your, you can have it right there. But there's a copy of, of the lesson that we're going to go through. And uh, if you want to, you can print it off, of course, in Jesus' name. Amen. And we are going to start. And the title of this lesson is The Sign of Salvation. The sign of salvation. Now, remember, we talked about the uh, the, the the rabbi or the the high priest, how he had a little placa on his head, and it said, "Holiness unto the Lord." Mm -hmm. So the the Lord is looking for those who have His name written on their forehead. Amen. Amen. So here's the icebreaker. All right. All right. What is the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear the word mark or sign? Um, kind of like a tag or like I belong mm -hmm. to that, a label. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. So when I hear the word Mark, right, I, I got traumatized because a Baptist guy, when I was about 18 or 19, told me about the Mark of the Beast. I, I mm -hmm. yeah, I grew up in the Catholic church. We, we didn't study the Bible. We just, you know, listened to what we were told. And he told me about the Mark of the Beast. Oh. And so anytime I hear a mark, I'm like, 
it's it's the reason why I don't, it's part two of the reason I don't have a, a, any tattoos mm -hmm. because I was so scared of the idea of getting a mark. Right. Right. That I was, makes sense. I mean, you know, right. it's not the same thing, no. but it just scared the living daylights out of me. And when I hear sign, I think of something hopeful. For sure. Right. Because like the sign of Jesus coming, signs sign, of the times, yes. et cetera. Anyway, that's what I think about when I think about marks and signs. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay, let's read Revelation chapter 9, verse 4. I'm going to undo my, oh, my top button here. It says in Revelation 9, 4, they were commanded not to harm the grass of the earth or any green thing or any tree, but only those men who do not have the seal of God in their forehead. Amen. What is this referring to? What this is referring to, it, it, now remember the timeline. We've been talking about this on Sunday. Um, uh, but what we're talking uh, in, in the prophetic timeline, what ends up happening is that uh, the church is raptured away. The church is raptured away. The, uh, the Antichrist comes. He makes a peace treaty with Israel, and then for three and a half years, there's the tribulation. During that, that first half of the tribulation, the 144,000 Jews, 12,000 virgin men of each tribe of Israel, go out and evangelize the world and bring Israel to them. During this time, the world is going to suffer under the hand of the Antichrist who is going to try and get control over the whole world. He's been given authority, right? Mm. And he's going to try and, and put everything under his control, but people are going to rebel, right? Those so, that are not under his deception, right? Or the deception. Of those who are him. under his deception, but also there are just going to be people who, who are rebelling because they don't want to be controlled, sure. right? Yeah. 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 I mean, Tigers are fine when they're attacking other people, but when they're attacking you, it's a big thing, right? Mm -hmm. So the Antichrist is going to be attacking other people but and, and people who are rebelling against him. Um, not everybody's going to be rebelling uh, fr from him out of a pure motive. But anyway, those who do, those who do during this time, uh -huh. right, there are going to be people who get converted during that time. And this wow. is who they're referring to right okay. here. Okay, there, these are referred to as tribulation saints. Okay, that makes tribulation sense. saints, people who get converted during that time tribulation. under the ministry of the Jewish people. And, and the church will already be gone. The church will already be gone, but there are going to be Gentiles who, who come. Those during that, that they time. have never heard the gospel before. That's why they have an opportunity. Um, well, so the gospel, by the time it's preached to every creature, when the Antichrist comes, these are people who perhaps have, have grown up during that time. Okay. You know, maybe they were like 16. They were young. Yeah. Right. Something like that. And now they, it's been two years into, into the Antichrist time. And so they're coming to Jesus, that kind of thing. Okay. Okay. So is that? Yeah. No, but no, the, the point is, the point is those men who do not have the seal of God in their forehead, those are the ones who are going to be tormented by the devil and his demons. Wow. Those who have the seal in their forehead will not be tormented. And you, wow. Now, you may think, wow, that's kind of new. No. Remember when Moses pronounced all the curses mm -hmm. on Egypt? Right. And yes. how everybody in Egypt, except for, his, for God's for, people, yes, for suffered. Guys. Amen. Right? Mm -hmm. The Jewish people didn't suffer lice. The Jewish people didn't suffer darkness. The Jewish people didn't suffer their cattle dying. They didn't suffer their firstborn dying. Why? Because they had the seal of God on them, the blood of the lamb. Amen. Amen. Okay. So let's read. It is very clear that the dark clouds of God's judgment are gathering over the world with hurried steps. The end of the era of the church of the Lord Jesus on earth approaches. Little time remains for our encounter with the Lord. It will happen unexpectedly 
and instantly. All right, let me, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 52. 1 Corinthians 15, 52. Uh, see, paper still works better than paper still works better than this. <laughs> Amen. All right. 1552. And the Bible says in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. Amen. That's tremendous, huh? Yeah, that's awesome. Gosh, you know, how many of you today, and you don't have to raise your hand if you don't want to, but if you want to, of course you can. But how many had a day today where you just said, you know what, Lord, let the twinkling of the eye happen right now. Yeah, I've had many. Of Amen. Those yeah. Oof. Come, Lord Jesus, right now. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So it says here the sign of salvation. God's sign or mark on the forehead represents the salvation of the upcoming judgment. The church of Jesus consists of those people whose foreheads show the engraving sign holiness to the lord holiness is an essential requirement to be part of the rapture of the church hebrews 12 14 is very clear without holiness no man will see the lord that's what the scripture says so we have to have the holiness of god on us yes now the 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 way that that works is you have to be in covenant with god and so in the old covenant, it was through a series of works that you were justified by him, mm -hmm. right? Right. So the, the spilling of blood of the lamb, the spotless, right? lamb. The spotless lamb yeah. would cover your sins. We, if we're going to have that mark on us, we have to be in covenant with the Lord. And that's what baptism in Jesus' name and the infilling of the Holy Ghost Hallelujah. is. Yes. So we always have to have that, that holiness within us. And then that holiness comes, comes out. out. Yeah. Right? It's a witness. It's a witness. Yeah. It's a witness. I saw a video of this guy. And um, I, I forget the exact circumstances. Um, oh, I know what it was. It was like some football player or something. And he was doing something. He was cussing up a storm. And... He, he, uh, he was being really mean to somebody or something. Anyway, then somebody starts talking to him and he goes, I love the Lord. So things are, I'm all right. And I'm thinking, Ooh, hang on now. Mm -hmm. Something's not matching up here. Now it's not up to me to say whether he's saved or not saved, right. but what I can say is that certain things follow you when you get saved, right? Mm -hmm. When you are truly converted, <clears throat> things change with you, right? Sure, yeah. I, mean, and... I mean, did you stop having coffee with people when we got married? No. <laughs> well, are, was that a trick question? No, it's an obvious question. You go, of course. You go, okay, go, of course. I did not do many things with other people. Just <laughs> <here>. <laughs> Okay, look, the bottom line, so what I'm trying to say, okay, she's not playing <laughs> ball here, folks. She's not playing ball. Okay, what I'm trying to say is that when we got married, or actually when we started courting, right, mm -hmm. we forsook all others, right? Pretty much, yeah, we just want so, to be together. Exactly. And so when God comes into our life and we're separated, we're sanctified, we're made holy by him, we just want him. Yeah. Amen. We should. So that's what we should want. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. So back to the back to the, the printing here. If we carry, if we carry the holiness to the Lord sign on our foreheads, nothing and no one will prevent us from meeting the Lord in the heavens. You know what? <laughs> Tell them the story about when we when we were getting married. And people were saying, no, we can't go yet, you know. Oh, yeah, we were in the limousine. 
Who's we? You got to tell them. Who. Um, the bridesmaids and us: Darlene, Esther, Mary Beth, um, all the people that were known. Mm-hmm. I think those were only three in our wedding, mm-hmm. um, and the and the kids, some of the kids. And it was our wedding was at four, mm-hmm. and Esther and Darlene and them were saying. Hang on, I was um, up. I it was a Saturday. I yeah. woke up at six a.m. I was ready and showered by six fifteen. Ready to go, and so Slave. we had both decided that we were not going to be late to our wedding or for nothing. Right. So at four, at three fifty eight or nine, they said, "Oh, people are still coming in the parking lot." I said, "I don't care." I told <laughs> Steve I was going to meet him at four. Mm-hmm. I'm walking in, mm-hmm. and so yeah, we we talked about that how we made sure we were on time for each other. Yeah, it was special. Yeah. So the point we're trying to get to here is, as it says here, nothing or no one will prevent us from meeting the Lord in the heavens. Amen. Folks. Perfect picture, Steve. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Good. So here's the thing, folks. Nothing should prevent us yes. from meeting our Lord in the heaven. Right? Amen. Yeah. And the reason, and the things that will keep us out. Remember what was said this week in, in the preaching. And the, in the preaching, we said it's not, uh, uh, people will not go to heaven because of neglect. People, some people think, oh, you know, I, it's going to be, uh, it, it's going to take murder or th- thievery for me to get kept out of heaven. No, simple neglect. Remember what the book of Hebrews says, how shall we, uh, how shall we survive if we neglect, or how should we be saved if we neglect so great salvation? Amen. Yeah. Right. So don't let it, don't let it be neglect. Amen. Uh, if you are serving in the beauty of holiness, as Psalms 96, nine says, the Lord promises us to take us with him. Revelation three ten. But if we do not have the sign of salvation, God will have to leave us here to suffer the painful punishment prepared for those who do not sanctify themselves for him. Wow. You know what I read on Twitter today? What? Somebody said, hell is not full of people who God rejected. Hmm. It's full of people who rejected, rejected God. him. Yeah, that makes sense. Right? Yeah. He does not reject us, folks. Never. We serve him. We serve him imperfectly. That's absolutely true. Amen. But we strive from day to day. Mm-hmm. Can somebody say amen? Yes, we strive. All right. Amen. We, we can do hands on Zoom. <laughs> we can do uh, comments on Facebook. Amen. There you go, brother. Amen. amen. Um, but if we do not have the sign. Okay. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Okay, this judgment will come with full force upon the earth. During the great tribulation, after the rapture, the people who did not accept to have the sign holiness to the Lord on their foreheads will be forced to worship the image of the beast. And if they refuse, they will be killed. You know, there's a very curious uh, scripture in the last, uh, in the last a, a chapter of the book of Revelation. It's Revelation 11, Re- Revelation 22, verse 11. And it says, uh, to him that is unjust, let him be unjust still. To him that is filthy, let him be filthy still. To him that is righteous, let him be righteous still. To him that is holy, Amen. let him be holy still. And if you read that, it almost sounds like God is condemning people, right? Mm-hmm. Like, right. or like right. He's just one-sidedly saying, "You're you're Go done," yeah. right? But no, look at what He's saying. He's saying, "If you are evil, you're going to stay evil. If you're holy, you're going to stay holy." In other words, how you? It, it's that <clears throat> old principle. How you practice is how you play. Mm. How many heard that in, in, yeah. in football, mm-hmm. in baseball, in other sports? Or music. When yeah. you, or music when you're a kid. Yeah. If, if, you get, if you get all lazy, yeah. if, if, you just, if you just are a sluggo in practice, 
that's how you're going to play in the game. And the truth of the matter is God wants us to be looking for him. He wants us to be looking for him, to be ready for him. And we're going to continue to be whatever we are now. That now the thing is, what are we now? Are we striving Mm -hmm. or are we laying back? Are we talking to people about Jesus or are we laying back? Are we just worried about her? And I go back to the grocery store every time because it's a chore. But we go to the grocery store. Are we trying to avoid people so we don't get entangled inviting somebody to church and having a conversation? Somebody's crying over the carrots and you're like, oh my God, let me get away from here. No, God wants us to talk to people, tell people about Jesus. How many know time is coming at the end? Amen. Come on, Facebook, let us know. Come on, Zoom, let us know. Amen. Time time is winding down. And you know what? Here's the thing. There are some people who are hearing the call of the master. And he's calling at this 11th hour of the day. Maybe you, maybe you've been there since the break of day, 6 a.m. serving the Lord for years and years and years, right? Mm -hmm. And and you're feeling like you ought to give up. No. Don't, because there are people God is calling at this 11th hour and he's going to pay them. He's going to pay us. He's going to reward us in Jesus name. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. Amen. Did we do this already? Where where are we at? I got so excited I lost my spot. (laughs) Amen. Oh, worship the image. Okay. Revelation 13, 15. And and so when it says in 1 Peter 1, 16, uh, 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 it says, be ye holy for I am holy. Mm -hmm. God wants us to be separated out to him. And folks, that is right here. It starts right here. We've got to have it right here. And what that means is the desire. You see, at the baptism we had today, one of the people, one of the people who got baptized was almost ready, I'm telling you, to break into the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Almost ready. And I puzzled it out in my head. How is it? That sometimes people are going to have the Holy Ghost and sometimes people won't have the Holy Ghost. And I don't mean just at baptism, but I mean in church service or wherever. Mm -hmm. And I remembered back to the conversation that I had with him the, the night before or the day before. And he texted me and he says, I want to know, can you give me some scriptures to read that talk about the way to holiness? the way to righteous or the way to righteousness, he said. And so I gave him chapter one and chapter two of the book of Acts. And I explained in the text what it was about. And I said, go read it. If you have any questions, come on, let's talk to me. And so that was during the day. Well, at the end of the day, he texted me and he said, I want to get baptized. And I went, whoa, and I called him, or I, we were texting back and forth. I think I called. No, I, yeah, wait, I called him. We talked. And he said, I read those scriptures and they spoke to me. And the reason why it was so important it, or, or, or what I heard God speak in my spirit was that he read the scriptures. He was looking for the way of holiness. He was looking for the righteous, the way of righteousness. And he said, I'm going to take it. And that's why when I asked him last night, when do you want to get baptized? He said, we could do it right, right now, now if you want. It was like yeah. 830. Yeah. And I said, I, and I thought about it for a second. I said, I said well, what about tomorrow? Do you want to get baptized tomorrow? He goes, yeah. He goes, yeah, tomorrow. And so we made arrangements. We, he got baptized. Just, just an hour ago. Yeah. Just an hour ago. So. And then I said, at the end of it, I said, you know, we, let's have some first steps kind of um, Bible studies. Uh, uh, and he goes, the sooner, the better. My point is thirst, this, yeah. when you have that thirst, yeah. when you have that desire, it doesn't matter if you're perfect. It matters that you have that desire and God will answer that and he will purify. Right. 
He will purify you. He'll take the desires away. Yeah. He'll take the yeah. desires to, to want to follow him, right? Hallelujah. It's not all about just touch not, but he'll tell you and give you the power to touch that which is right and to not touch that which is not right. In other words, he's guiding us in his way of holiness. Amen. Amen. So I'm, I'm excited. Okay, three times six. So that's the good news. All right. The people living in the time of the great tribulation will be required to bear the sign of the Antichrist. And what will that sign be? Quote, the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast. For it is the number of man. His number is 666. That's Revelation 13, verses 17 and 18. Three times six is the maximum power of evil that a man can get, inspired by the spirit of the Antichrist. Today, we see more and more people with this sign over their lives in preparation for what is to come with the Antichrist. Come on, you know that's true. People hate each other. Yeah, it's horrible. I mean, people, you know, when I was a kid, you know, you would fight, you know, and you'd have bloody lips and black eyes and you, you, you were, well, this you're... was in New York, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's everywhere. <laughs> but anyway, but now what do people do? People want to kill each other. There's a difference between a fight 30 years ago and a fight now. Now it's about stomping somebody out. It's about breaking their teeth. It's about kicking them in the face. And it's about knocking them out. No Folks, there is no restraint. No restraint. No, those, days are, those days are gone. That's it. That's it. Yeah. I, I remember, um, I remember I got in some, uh, never mind. Forgive me. <laughs> Silly stories. Mm -hmm. But my point is simply yeah. this. Back then, you could just go, okay, I'm done. Yeah. And that was it. Now, it's, you know, it's oh. 10 people on one. Yeah. It's, it's bad. It's scary. People hate each other. Imagine when the Lord takes us away and withdraws his spirit from this earth. Mm -hmm. That is something we probably, we don't want to see that. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the sad thing is, you know, even now with the church here on earth, we've got people who won't speak to each other because yeah. they have different political views. Right. And you know what? People held them stronger and just as strong in years past. But what happened? What happened was, is that now people have no tolerance. Okay. So okay. we're going to go on. Paul said these would be dangerous times, 2 Timothy 3 and 1. He also described the people of these times who we will call 666 people. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful. Hang on, I'm just going to stop right there for a second. I'm going to stop you right there. Here's the thing. Think about it. When you talk to people about what, how we should be and how we shouldn't be, what do they tell you? Oh, that's not a salvation issue. Look what the Lord says. He says unthankfulness. Unthankfulness is the mark of people who are lost. Okay. Unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Folks, pleasure is going to kill us. Yeah. Pleasure is going to kill us. You know, God has blessed us. Go ahead, enjoy your meal. Even take a, take a photograph and show people, I don't care. But it can't be the center of your life. Amen. Acquiring things cannot be the center of your life. And again, 
I'm not mad because you got stuff. No. Amen. I have stuff. I have stuff you don't have. You have stuff I don't have. Right. Right. Just keeping in that priority and in perspective. Right. I agree. Yeah. It's everything. Own stuff. Don't let stuff own you. Amen. Okay. So good traders, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying its power. And from such people turn, turn away. away. Oh, Amen. so none. Here's, uh, yeah. PC. <laughs> yeah. I mean, here's the thing, folks. Folks, I, I believe that it's right for us to dress modestly. I believe it's right for us not to wear rings, no jewelry, you know, and for women to not cut their hair. I, I believe that's the way things ought to be. But first, yes. you've got to work on this. Hallelujah. Everything is going to come out. All the good stuff is going to come out if you work on this first. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It starts. Well, you know what? I'm mad today. So I'm going to do whatever I want. I'm going to work on this. Brother Steve says work on, work on it all. Amen. <laughs> but get, start there. Yeah, get your heart yeah. right. Yeah. Why? Because that's where joy is. Amen. That's yes. where joy is. I, I said this on Sunday. Michael W. Smith, a singer, he was being, um, he was being interviewed. And he said, uh, someone asked him, you know, was asking him about his life and so he said he said that one day he said he came out of his trailer and somebody walked by his trailer and he said hi to them you know like a fan or something and he he said hi to them and the person snubbed him right in other words looked at him and just went and walked on and he said who he said and he said in himself he goes who does that guy think he is Oh my God, how can he treat me like that? Right? And he says, doesn't he know who I am? And he said, he caught himself. And he said that because of that, he said he felt the Lord moving on him. He said he endeavors never to be offended again. Wow. Yeah. He wants, he works on never being offended again. And I thought, man. That's such a high ideal. Yeah. But he, he also said this. He said, can you imagine the tremendous freedom in living an unoffended life? And it stopped me in my tracks. Come on, people. Amen. Turn off your video. Go amen. And then you can put it back up. No, I was just, sister, uh, I was just teasing. No, no, no. Check it out. I was just saying, you know, Turn off your, turn off your video, go, amen, that's me. And then turn your video back on. That's me. Come on. Who doesn't get offended? Who doesn't get hurt? Right. But he said, imagine the freedom in not being offended. And I just felt a weight coming off of me. And I said, that's what I'm going to do. Mm. What was that? I'm going to be like Mikey. <laughs> right. I'm going to try yeah. and be like that. Because I want that freedom. Awesome. That's powerful. That's moving toward the heart of God. Can yes. we do that? I think yeah. we can. Okay. I kind of got down that rabbit trail. Okay. The Bible responds to the Bible. Through Paul's letter, we can count the number of the beast, which John says in Revelation 13, 18. The first six are these. Men are lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, and disobedient to parents. Oh, wow. Then the second six, unthankful, unholy, unloving, without self-control, slanderers, unforgiving. The third six, wow. brutal, despisers of good, traitors, haughty, headstrong, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Wow, I remember. So there are 18 characteristics. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Six plus six plus six, six. Right there. these if we can work on all these things second timothy chapter three yep second timothy chapter three and verse one folks that's that's powerful stuff with tremendous prophetic insight 
the Apostle Paul describes the essence of the spirit of the Antichrist, showing the characteristic features of the 666 people. Consider this fact. The sign three times six is appearing on the forehead of people of this age with increasing intensity. The generation who worships the Antichrist is here. The most dangerous part of these people is that in many cases, they resemble us. Wow. They bring a form of godliness. Folks, we need to not only uh, display these, these features before other people, we need to display them in front of the church people and we need to take them home. The good things, right? Mm -hmm. We need to have that righteousness on us at all times. Not just, you know, like some people, some people they display to the world, oh, I'm so, you know, I'm so holy. And then they treat the church people bad. And then there are some people who show the church people, oh, I'm so holy, and they treat other people bad. Right. But both of those kinds of people take that home. Mm -hmm. We've got to bring that home. I'm telling you, if we focus on that at home, we'll bring it out in all parts of our life. Isn't that amazing? Amen. You know, I find that in my Christian walk, when, when I'm struggling with any one of these 18 things, it's usually if I don't have the joy of the Lord, mm -hmm. I maybe forgot to listen to Christian music to abide, you know, the, mm -hmm. how in the book of John, it says abide in abide me in over me. and over. I don't yeah. know how many times someone counted it one time and told me, did you know it says X amount of times? It's so important we abide because yeah. that is where we're not going to get tripped up, you know, just having our mind stayed on the Lord. Mm -hmm. you, you know, that's exactly right. Uh, you know, quite often during my work day, I will put on 89.9 and you can get it on the computer on familyradio.org and they play beautiful music during the day. And that beautiful music is, um, it, it's, it's old church music. It's what you um, love. You love. I love it. The high but it's, but it's music. beautiful. It's That's beautiful. So and it's and so peaceful, peaceful. Yeah. folks. When that comes on, I abide in the Lord in that. Yes. Now, what is it for you? Is it listening to the Bible being yeah. read to you? Is it reading the scriptures yourself? Is it listening to Christian music? What, whatever it is. Or a podcast. Yeah, or a podcast some, where somebody, whatever it whatever is. Whatever it is. I listen to choir music in the morning. That takes me back to when I was, you know, young and serving God with such fire. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah what I do. Okay. Talking about the 666 people. It says they arrive with the Bible under their arms, use Christian terminology and preach appealing messages of love and unity. Every visible aspect of their lives makes them appear good Christians, but watch out folks. I don't want us to be lost. I want us to make sure Hallelujah. that you and me, that we all go together I want to see you, 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 and all of you Amen. up in heaven. Yes. So we have to abide in Jesus. Amen. When the Antichrist is revealed, he will come with a message of peace and love. Satan who dwells in him will turn him into a unifying leader like never before seen in the world. A gifted leader with a power of influence so irresistible and an appearance of life so similar to that of Christ mm. that almost everyone will believe he is Christ. Yes. Wow. Amen. Deception. 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 Because here's the, here's the thing, folks. The battle of Gog and Magog, which comes before the rapture, right? Remember, folks, the battle of Gog and Magog, Ezekiel 38 and 39, comes before the rapture. And the reason that is important is this. Okay. It's going to feel like the whole world is on fire. You mm -hmm. think the world's on fire now. You wait. And he's going to come and bring peace at a time when war and chaos seems in the offing. And if we're not lined up with the Lord, we'll believe this man. 
will we'll turn to him oh, and be Jesus. so grateful that he's the man of peace. He'll look just like Jesus. Amen. Yeah. I'm looking at what is Gog and Magog. Which countries are those? That's um, like Syria, Syria and uh, Libya and okay. Russia. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So here we go. Without a doubt. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. Without a doubt. They will be very dangerous times, but there is still a way out. We still have time to decide whom we want to be. 666 people like most or true worshipers of God. Amen. It is true that the pressure of this world today to reject the holiness to the Lord's sign is very strong. But if we yield to this pressure, we will be converted into worshipers of the Antichrist and the judgment of God will come upon us inevitably. Folks, it's possible for you and me. It, nothing can take us out of the hand of Jesus. Nothing. But we can leave. Right? The Bible says, those who, it says of those folks, that those whose name have been erased from the Lamb's book of life. Well, how do you get it erased? Well, it was there at one time. Hmm. Conclusion. Okay, let's read 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 3 through 5. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 3 through 5. And it says, For the time will come when, okay, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts. Shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears? Make sure you have a good Bible teacher. Amen? Yes. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, yes. do the work of an evangelist, um, yeah. make full proof of thy ministry. This was Paul admonishing Timothy his son in the Lord. He says, in your ministry, Timothy was the, was the pastor at the Jerusalem church. And so he's saying, make full proof of your ministry. Do, do evangelize, teach. He says, be a good pastor. He says, endure afflictions. Folks, we have to endure afflictions. Yes. Amen. We have to endure afflictions. Not a one of us is starving, <laughs> as far as I know. Yeah. Amen. But what would you say to someone who feels like they just can't make it one more moment in that affliction? Because, you know, sometimes you get to your, that end point. You say, I'm done. I would you say, know? yeah, I would say, look at your worst physical problem you've ever had, mm -hmm. right? Look at your worst physical problem you've ever had. So, for instance, like if you broke an ankle or if you, um, if you broke like I broke my surgery, knee, yeah. or you had a surgery, yeah. uh, or you endured a, a, a disease that debilitated you, or maybe you were under persecution. Remember how heavy that burden was. And remember how some days you couldn't take it. And you cried out to God and you said, Lord, help me. And it still continued. And then when it was all done, and that affliction was taken from you. How you remembered, you looked back and Jesus was there the whole time. I would say endure. Yes. One more day. One more moment, yeah. If that sounds too philosophical for you, check this out. If it's that bad, and I'm being dead serious. If it's that bad, pray and then go to bed. Call on the Lord. Yeah. Call on the Lord and go to bed. Yeah. I'm not being sarcastic. I'm being serious. I've had days. Just give it. Just give it to the give Lord to him. and go to bed. Yeah, it is that easy. And guess what? Hard. What does the Bible say? Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Yes. When you wake up. It's a new day. Th things yeah. are going to be a new day. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So if ever it's 630 and I just tell you it's good night, don't ask me any questions, just leave me alone. Yep, I'll say go ahead. <laughs> leave me alone. Amen. Okay, let us answer this question, friends. 
Whose sign do I want on my forehead? Mm. Brethren, <laughs> friend, you need to recognize the time in which we live. The Antichrist is coming. But before Jesus Christ will come for his church. Oops, we got to get somebody here. Okay. But before Jesus Christ will come, the Antichrist is coming, but before Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ will come for his church. church. Yeah. He shed his blood on the cross Not to any, enable yeah. your sanctification, yes. your separation, your making whole, your being holy. He gave his life for you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. He gave his life for you. Hmm. I encourage you to choose today the mark of, quote, holiness to the Lord. Can you choose that today? Can yes. you choose that today? Amen. Yes. God can change anybody. We saw it today. Hallelujah. We saw two souls give their life to Jesus today. Amen. Baptized in Jesus' name. I asked them, have you repented of your sin? Both of them said yes. They repented. They gave it all up. Thank you, Lord. They were baptized in Jesus' name. And I believe they're going to be filled with the power of the Holy Amen. Ghost soon enough. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Your salvation from the coming judgment depends on it. Okay. So let me ask you. Okay. What steps will you take in the upcoming days to have Jesus' mark on your life? Okay. So on the way here, mm -hmm. we were talking about how we were able in that moment when, when they got baptized, to speak in tongues and to call on the Lord and just to bring the fire of God down. I really believe that in this final hour, just based on mm. different churches and, and all that, I've talked to different people, the Holy Ghost, the anointing, that oil, mm. your lamp has to be full. If it is the not- The five foolish virgins and, virgins and the five wise virgins. Yes. The difference- the wise ones were full of oil, the oil which, which is the Holy Ghost. Which is the picture of the Holy Ghost. Yes, and we have to have that lamp, that oil mm -hmm. in, in our lives because if we don't, we're dried up. We just can't feel God. And I, I've been there. Amen. No matter, I, I'm celebrating 30 years this month of being baptized. But so I, I understand how mm -hmm. you feel. You know, you have your dry spells and then you got your days where you're on fire. But just to have that exercise and that faith of, the Holy Ghost and speaking in tongues and, you know, just pressing through this flesh mm. to reach for that. So here, here's what, here's what I'm going to do. I believe that's exactly correct. But what that's if you're, what if you're feeling a little bit dry? Yes. Today, today I had a really hard day before 4 PM. I had a yeah. really hard day. You did. There was a lot of stuff going on at work. It was yeah. a real problem. I didn't have my family radio on. Because I was thinking so hard about the problems I was working. I didn't have that place that I abided. I didn't have that music, you know, that beautiful choir music, that beautiful, those psalms and hymns unto the Lord, drawing me into that place. I wasn't abiding in the Lord today. Right. And it happens. so forgot, exactly. I forgot to put it on. Yeah. Um, but, but here, check. Here's, here's my point. So. I, I was praying before we did the baptisms. I, I uh, we had the baptisms and the fellowship and, and everything, and it was beautiful. That drew me right into right abiding. In, yeah. Right. So imagine it, it just takes getting into the That's things it. of God to abide in him. Yes. What if I had spent my day breaking my head on those problems, but with my with my beautiful music yeah. drawing me into him? They sing the Psalms so that word would have been penetrating. Yes. I wouldn't have been so downcast. I mean, right. honey, at four o'clock, I was, so my bottom line, I'm going to fix it tomorrow. Right. See, yeah, it's easy to do. And by the time okay. I get to church and, and I was speaking in tongues in the water, folks, when we go to yeah. church on Sunday, we're having pastor's day. It's we easy. need to speak in tongues. We have to. Can we give God the glory Hallelujah! in pastor's day? Amen. Amen. You know, Doesn't the world matter. thinks because you have an honor ceremony that it's got to be dry and stiff and people are sweating and just ready to get out. No, I say we honor the Lord on that Amen. day. Yes. Amen. That's what we do. I think so. That'd be awesome. So abiding, abiding, yeah. what are you going to do? 
to abide, abide in the Lord. That's it. Yeah. What are you going to do out. to have his mark in your life? Yeah. So that's what I'm going to do tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I'm going to put on my choir music and every chance we get, look up scripture, whatever it is, pray all day. Maybe I was just hangry because I didn't have lunch until two. <laughs> what happened with that? <laughs> <laughs> i don't know mm. amen but folks we want you to come with us we want us to go to go to be with jesus yes we all need to get there amen yes amen mm. i hope you're feeling good i hope you're feeling like the power of god was in this yeah uh, i think i think i talked a little bit kind of a lot but anyway we will see we will see um, let me just uh, go ahead and uh, pray. Let, let's pray. Amen. Can we go ahead and pray? Let's pray. All right. Lord Jesus, we bless you, God. We ask you, Lord, right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, as we pray together as one body, we ask you, God, that you would help us to abide in you. Lord, that that mark of holiness would be in our foreheads. We ask you, Lord, that you would draw us deeper into this covenant, you, this Jesus. promise with you. you and Lord. as you do, Lord, uh, let, let those who are outside see what is inside. Amen. In Jesus', Jesus. name, amen. 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 You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remind you of one thing that came up. When I was talking with Wade, um, he said... He said something very interesting. I mean, it almost sounds like a preacher's line, but he said this. He said, I said to I asked him, what, what drove you to want to get baptized? Mm -hmm. And he said, you know what? He said, I'm tired of all of it. And he says, I see how you are. I see how brother Adam is. I see how my father-in-law is. He says, and I want what you guys have. Testimony. Awesome. Folks, can we abide and yes. let that oil flow? Amen. Then our family will come, our friends will come. They will. Yeah. You ever opened That's up a I jar of oil? Them. What's the problem with opening up a jar of oil? You pour some out, right? And the oil gets all over the bottle. Oil has to escape. Amen. And when the oil of the Holy Ghost, when it's in you, it can't help but escape and it gets over everything. Amen. Amen. I just want to say to you folks, let the oil of the joy of the Lord escape and be on you. Amen. Amen. In Jesus name. Amen. Folks, this Sunday, we're having Pastor's Day, 930 a.m. Amen. God has answered prayers. Brother Charles is now on a great schedule. They'll be able to come to church. We're looking so forward to seeing them. Amen. Amen. God, it's just wonderful. Awesome. So for everybody out there on Facebook, thank you so much for watching. Amen. For everybody here on Zoom, God bless you. Have a wonderful night. And Bye. we will see you on Sunday in Jesus name. Jesus name. God bless you, Sergio. Amen. God bless, Amen. You, God bless you, sister and brother. Amen. God bless you. God bless you, brother. Good to hear from you, brother Adam. Amen. We'll see y'all later. God bless you, Mr. Diane. Good night. Amen. Good night.